Well, getting ready to make this delivery of the lift. I called him a couple hours ago and he asked if I could wait till they got back from lunch, which kind of sucks, but I had to burn about 45 minutes. Um, but I'm three miles away now. He asked me, um, he was like, what do you got, like a, a pickup and a flatbed? I said, yeah. He goes, well, how'd you get it on there? I said, well, we hired a rollback and uh, they set it on there. And he says, okay, I got forklifts, but I also have a uh, buddy with a rollback and uh, I might just get him to come over. And I said, that's probably best um, because this thing is so, which I, it might be why it rolled over. This thing is very unstable, like on a trailer. It's real top heavy. I mean, I know when we were loading it with the rollback, on the rollback, it got to a point where it was like, it was starting to worry me. And, uh, so then when he got it on the back of the rollback, he, he only put it on the way, way back so he could shuffle it off. But with all that rain, he got stuck trying to get out to back up to me. He was able to get out on his own. Uh, but the, the lift was like, it was moving a little too much for me to be comfortable. And I was just letting him do his thing and he got out and everything was fine. But and then when I went to pull out of there, so they were closing. So I just, I kept my winch on it, kept it tight and then just pulled out of their lot. Well, it was real rough and real the bottom of that pit. So I was real worried about tipping over there. That's why it's got it's got straps over top of it. It's got four tie down points for straps or chains or whatever. Uh, I use chains. It has chains. It has straps in the uh, diagram. But anyways, um, I put two over the top because I was worried about it just being so top heavy. But. I'm going to pull in here, hopefully, he just called me, I told him I was 10 minutes out, so I'll be there in a minute, and uh, I'm hoping the rollbacks there are waiting, it should take us 10 minutes to get it off, bada bing, and uh, this company actually makes sneaker lifts, repo wheel lifts called Lift and Toe, I mean, they're, they're all over the nation, um, their lifts are, they're, they're based here in Pennsylvania, little town called Orstown, Pennsylvania, which is uh, not too far from where I used to live. Probably go about 20 minutes to the west here, you'd end up at my house. And I used to have to come this way all the time, getting off the turnpike if you were coming down into like Chambersburg area. So I'll pull in here, I will, uh, I'll see how long it actually takes us to get it off. Uh, hopefully their rollback sits up high enough be able to lower their deck like down onto mine which I would assume it probably will be being a lower deck it's I think even like a uh, you know like a fit like a f550 would be would be high enough I mean, the guy had a small I guess it was like a small Peterbilt um, uh, rollback I'm, I'm losing my train of thought, my phone's going off. Uh, he had a Peterbilt rollback, so it sits a little higher, but I think any, I think anything at this point will probably be, be able to get it off, um, and get it off safely.
Well, getting a little Black Friday shopping done here. This is only three ninety nine right now. I'll take that. Sun's coming up. Ain't a bit of traffic on the road today, and I will take that. That is the reason we're going this way. Um, this customer with my van, the guy you always see me pick up these vans for, he bought another one down here in Maryland. He bought this one in South Carolina, and he's got another one in Maryland. And said, hey, if you grab that, just bring them up together, and uh, you can bring them up whenever. So. So he's not going to be there today, but he said if I give him a, just shoot him a text about 45 minutes out, he'll run over and uh, help me unload him and write me a check, which he always does. He always pays me COD, which is awesome. And like I had said before, he didn't know I was going to be down in South Carolina and this one was on the board and I ended up texting him and saying, hey, I'll get this one for you because uh, he's the only one in that town. It's way western Maryland. It's up where our lake house is. And uh, hell, he's only 15 minutes from where the lake house is. Uh, but I said, hey, I'll grab that for you. And then he ended up buying another one. And he was like, um, I guess it was like a buy, buy it, uh, like a buy it now price one. He says, I'll buy it right now if you can get it for me. He says, if not, I'll pass on it. I said, no, I'll get it for you Friday and uh, bring it up the same day. That way you have it. Man, I have not been down to this auction in a long time. This is Brandywine, Maryland. I think this is considered IAA Metro Baltimore, Metro DC or something like that. I think Metro DC. Uh, this place used to be a total disaster. I'm talking 20, 30 trucks at a time here. Back when everybody was hauling cars. Now I had come down here, it's probably been at least a year since I've been down here. But the last time I was down here, it was a ghost town. So I don't know. I don't know if that's due to people getting out of the business, maybe they're not moving as many cars out of this place or what, but I specifically remember one time, uh, I'm trying to think of why is there a pig right there? Okay, there's a pig on the side of the road. I can specifically remember one time um, being here, I'm trying to think again what, what truck and trailer setup I had. I want to say I probably had the, the two-car Kaufman at that point. Uh, but I was here for four to five hours to get one vehicle. And it was for a customer of mine, so I didn't I didn't want to leave. Uh, and it, it's not like it paid a whole heck of a lot because it was just a kind of a local run. But that was... That was very long ago. Um, three, four years maybe. But we'll get pulled in here and uh, pretty sure we make a left here and then it's on the right. It used to always be hard. There's a school right here in front of us. It used to always be hard to get pulled out here. Today has been a breeze with traffic because it's the day after Thanksgiving and nobody's on the road yet. You know, most people travel this weekend and uh, feels good to be up working man I uh, woke up <laughs> you know my younger years I woke up you know on Thanksgiving hung over extremely hung over most of the time I hadn't even been to sleep as we were out partying and um, you know usually drank on Thanksgiving too so Friday I had to go into the dealership hung over and uh, I am not completely sober. Well, now I am, but you know, I only had a few beers yesterday, had a few beers on Wednesday, and that's it. Feels good. Feels good to be able to get out here and make some money and not feel like crap. 
So they have one truck here, two trucks here now, a little uh, Toyota pickup with a single car, and then like a uh, six, seven car back there. So I'm gonna pull. I don't know. I'm gonna pull. Right there is how you walk into the office. Mine runs and drives. I don't know if they'll even pick it up because of what it is. Maybe they'll just drive it out to me. But that's why I'm just going to pull up here and park along the side. And uh, with that being said, we should be able to get loaded pretty quickly here. Park out of the way. IAA, gotta have my vest on. Some people, some places are more strict about it, especially when you're getting loaded, but some of them won't even, uh, won't even, uh, like check you out until you have your vest on. So I'm just taking mine with me so I don't have to worry about walking back to the truck. These guys moving cars all around. I guess these guys own this lot right beside IAA, which is pretty nice. Comes in clutch. Uh, the back door closed up on this thing. Not sure. That stays closed. All right, runs and drives. Let's get her pulled up on there. I had trouble getting it started. Couldn't get a good ground with my new jump box wires aren't really that long so it's hard to find a spot but a little overhang here so this may drag on the ground trying to get it up on the trailer but we'll see what happens well she ain't gonna go up on the trailer this way trans is slipping so bad in this thing that's why it's here I assume because it's got no physical damage you get you can't even get the front tires really up the ramp without the trans starting to slip. So I'm gonna wait for the loader man, see if he brought it out here with the loader. So he set it down, I guess, assuming because it ran that I would just load it. But I'm gonna see if he'll pick it up. At least, I don't care which way he has to put it, to be honest with you. If he has to, uh, to pick it up from the front and put it on backwards, as long as I can get it on the trailer. Cause I think if I get it up there far enough, and he sets it on it would the trans might have enough to get it on the trailer i just don't it's not going to get up the ramp so we'll wait for him and uh know what he's doing out there there's a couple other guys loading cars here and i ain't seen him probably in about 15 minutes honestly since he brought this out i finally got it running i'm gonna let it run because uh, i assume maybe when the trans gets hot it starts to slip but i mean it was it was stone cold when I anyways who cares let's wait for the loader man and uh, speaking of loader men there's two right there hopefully they come out and they can just set this up on there enough for me to drive it the rest of the way well I was able to get it up on there got our heights checked good to go lube for my ratchets Let's go take care of our customer, get paid, take the weekend off. Well, it has been a slow ride up 68. A little heavy with the 7.3. These two vans, not aerodynamic at all. And uh, if you guys know 68 in Western Maryland, it can be uh, it can be a bear. I've been taking it slow, just trying to. Uh, not hurt anything, not stress the truck out. It's pretty gloomy out here. I, I thought it might kind of look like snow, but it was just hazy. Uh, we'll be at our customers in like um, six miles. He's there waiting for me, and uh, he'll help me get on, get them unloaded. Since the trans is slipping in this van on the back, it has, it actually has no reverse. So, um, 
At his place, we kind of unload on a hill. I kind of back up a hill, but he's got a, like a he's got a smaller little diesel tractor. It's probably like a I don't know 25 to 40 horsepower diesel John Deere uh, that he's got set up with like uh, chains and stuff. Uh, and forks and everything to move his vans around that don't run and stuff. So he'll just hop on that and pull it off probably and uh, I can probably get the the front one jump started enough to run to get off the trailer I'm guessing So one thing I don't like about I IAA is when you look up their stock number You can't see the vehicle or see what's you know, after it's sold you can't see what's wrong with it or or any of that, only the buyer can. Like Copart, you can look up an old lot number and it'll show you the listing and say sold. But it'll give you the information like uh, run and drive or not run and drive, how many miles, you know, if it was like uh, flood damage or whatever. So you can kind of know what you're kind of getting into. Um, just would have been curious what this one said, if it said run and drive or not. And, uh, it fired up, but as soon as I went to put it in gear, it moved forward a little bit, and then you could put your foot to the floor, and it would, it would. Oh well, that's why I like bringing stuff up here to this guy. He's always got the equipment. He says, "Let me know what you, what I owe you." In one mile. And uh, heck, he's even got one for next week for me. I'll be down in South Carolina again at some point next week with some trucks. Uh, and he's got one in North Carolina. I'll just swing through and grab that on the way back home because I can make my money. I, I give him a fair price, but it's uh, a lot higher than what like a load board price would be to get the stuff back for him. And uh, just knowing that I can, if he runs and drives, I can drop off anytime, you know, 24 seven, really. He'll leave me a check or he'll get me next time. And uh, if it doesn't run, he'll be there and he can pull it off, so. I'm gonna get off this exit right here. He's about three miles up the road, and uh, I should be in and out there in 15, 20 minutes at most. And uh, dead head home, and have a little bit of a weekend with the family. Thanksgiving was great yesterday. My mother-in-law cooked uh, for for us. It was my uh, my wife and her her two brothers, and her dad and mom, and it's kind of kept it small and simple, which was very nice because uh, if I don't have to travel on actual Thanksgiving or anything like that, I love it. <laughs> Excuse me. My dad, as you guys know, works for UPS and uh, uh, he will be pretty much uh, working. He works at nights, but he pretty much is back to work after his 34 hours every, every week. Uh, until after Christmas, so he'll, he's busy, so we don't do anything on Christmas, or excuse me, we don't do anything on Thanksgiving because he would have worked the night before, and uh, it's just a lot of work for my mom to cook, him come home, get some sleep, so we do it on the weekend, and then everybody can get together, so we'll do that this weekend, which would be nice, drink a couple sodas, have a little fun, my family's always a good time never know who's going to end up getting in a fight. But me and my sister are going to start yelling at each other about something that happened 10 years ago. Or It's good. But get pulled in here, get this. It's, uh, it's about 18 degrees cooler up here than it was when I came, came by my house. So I'm going to have to find... don't know if I have a big jacket in here, but I'll, I'll catch up with you guys after we get these unloaded. Much. 
Let me see here. Tuesday's taken care of. Wait. Monday's taken care of. Tuesday's taken care of. There's about one day that's not accounted for, which I may take the day uh, to be with the kids and then leave that evening. Because there's one night I gotta be on the road. So that may be that may be that night. I don't know. But pretty much all direct work except for Monday I could use I could use a vehicle coming home. Uh, it's not a very I won't be very far from the house, but it like maybe pick up a, you know an extra 250 300 bucks coming home. Uh, maybe one or two of those. Two would be nice if they were close, just because Tuesday I've got to be empty, so I've got to be able to pick them up Monday and deliver them on Monday. Um, because Tuesday I have to have. Yeah, that's true. I might have some. See, this is why I talk to myself sometimes, because then I realize like, hey, I might have some room. I could I could get a car on Monday that goes to where I'm going on Tuesday, which is a farther distance, which would make me more money and less running on Monday. So now that I'm thinking, you got a sand. I think it's a sandblaster. It's either a sandblaster or a um, powder coat uh, oven that I'm picking up. Uh, for Jack from Enthusiast, Dirty Max Jack. Uh, he had sold that, he had started that business, Left Lane Coatings, um, and has sold the business or sold the building. Uh, a little too much headache from what I, what I gather, which I get dealing with, dealing with employees and stuff. And, you know, then, you know, being so busy yourself, you can't even, always ever see everybody. It, it becomes a lot, so. He had sold some of his equipment, which I'm delivering uh, to the new owners uh, out towards Philadelphia. And he's in like the Lancaster area. So I may have some room, like, because I'll be up in like, you know, central PA um, on Monday. If I can get something, there's a, there's a salvage auction up there that I've been to a million times. If I can get something out of there going toward, out towards Philly, which is pretty popular. Um, I can I gotta I can check the dimensions. I might have room for one or two vehicles, depending on how I can put them on the trailer. So we'll see. Um, but and then we have a load of trucks to one to North Carolina, one to South Carolina, and then on um, and I have a van coming back for my van. So I've got a little couple little spots to fill in maybe. Uh, but with even if I don't fill those spots in, it's still gonna be a really good week. Oh, I'll get this thing wrapped up here. New caliper, new rotors, new pads. Just gonna bleed the brakes really on this thing. I want to show you something. So I put regular rotors back on this because I had drilled and slotted on it. And um, let me find the old pads and show you show you what happened to them. So my wife was complaining that the brakes were dragging, and I'm thinking, yeah, 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 whatever. Look at the imperfection on this pad. Now these are were pretty much new. Um, I put these on. I put Jordan slotted rotors on because she had a problem with her front rotors warping on her horse trailer. So I was like, oh, well, we'll work on heat dissipation with drilled and slotted well these came from Detroit axle and I think it's in the rotor itself so I'm pretty sure these were cut I don't know improperly it's the bottom rotor and I'm not I don't want to get all dirty um, they were cut improperly because one of these is raised on the other on the other one and I don't know if it's when the pad was catching that, that's what was dragging. Because these were a little lower than one of these. And they were dragging as it went by. Maybe in like one spot right here. Or this was higher than what this was. The way that pad looked. And uh, was just dragging. And so we just put a you know, waste of money here. But it's got to be done right. <laughs> 